for sticking out to it and uh, coming through to the final whistle uh, as, as winners. You know, credit to Blundell, I thought he's played superbly, really challenged us in their defence was outstanding as well. So, you know, all in all, it's been a great day. I'm just really proud of the boys and the experience they've had. How much character did your team show out there at times? Because the early start, you looked very comfortable, then you really had to fight towards the end. Yeah, we did, and uh, so credit to Blundell. They really uh, asked huge questions of us and they kept coming, they never gave up. Um, we had to really dig deep and just... Despite the odd mistake here and there, we um, we managed to kind of find our way back into it again. And you know, our defence has been our strongest point in the season. And we just made a few uncharacteristic errors, but the boys just really stuck at it and grafted out a really tough win um, against a very good side. So you know, it's, it's a fantastic day. You've just been on the sideline here talking to fellow teachers, I think, and junior school boys saying congratulations, Mr. Tank. Just how much does it mean to the school as a whole? It's fantastic. You know, I mean, uh, a lot of the boys that played in, in this final, remember when they were year six and year seven boys with, with guys up ahead of them that won a couple of finals as well. So, you know, it's just a, a great school feel and, you know, great collegiate atmosphere for them that, you know, it is important to celebrate our successes um, and, you know, I you know, be supportive of guys when they are doing really well at a national level. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll support each other and back each other up and hopefully it'll inspire a few of the young guys as well that, you know, they're really keen on their rugby and, you know, they're really proud to be part of Dulwich and, and everything we've got going on. Congratulations, well done. Cheers, thank you very much, appreciate it. Great Cheers, stuff. guys. Great Great stuff. Well, taking, it, taking inspiration, telling Bill Latham there, and that's what it's all about for the schoolboys at this sort of level, a chance to go out there and play and enjoy themselves, Tom May. Yeah, that's exactly what it's about. It's not all about progressing to the you know, professional ranks, it's about enjoying yourself, enjoying your, your games when you, you get the opportunity to play with your friends, um, and also playing in a stadium like this. You know, there's not many people that can say, oh, look, we've played, we've played and, and won at Allianz Park. Um, but a fantastic game of rugby and hopefully the same again to come. Well, it's Hartbury against Gosforth Academy. And there are the Gosforth team. Hartbury have already had their photos taken. There they are just going through their warm-up. And, uh, well, we can have a look at their results in terms of getting here. There are, of course, a couple of... Uh, size of the competition that they need to get through but uh, Hartbury running out at the beginning of September 19 points to 8 against Henley College then against Truro and Penwith it was a 14 points to 56 victory 68 26 they overcame Moulton College and Beach and Cliff School on the 27th of September by 24 points it's a 7 and uh, then a win over Exeter College by 47 points to 10. They, of course, were last year's finalists. So Hartbury would have been very happy to have dispatched them. And then once you get into November, well, it's the South Pool division that they have come on top of quite comfortably. 40 points to 10 against Henley College. A 42 points to 7 win against St Paul's. And then that 80, sorry, 28 points to 8 win over Exeter, chance to play them again and prove that they are very much ready. It is really those uh, eye-watering results uh, against the likes of Truro and Penwith College and Exeter that have led them to this eighth final in nine years. And, well, Harpery, they've got enough talent and belief that by the time they get to these finals, having had those run of results, they are very difficult to, uh, to stop getting their hands on the trophy. Yeah, clearly not shy of scoring a few points, that's for sure. And certainly when you look at them, you can tell that they're closely linked to uh, the championship outfit and, of course, Gloucester. Very athletic-looking lads, strong. And certainly, they've had a good run-up to the, this final. And a fantastic opportunity that, for them to put all that hard work that's come over the past two, three months in point in one game against what will undoubtedly be um, a tough team to break down. Well, Gosforth Academy, yeah, the uh, teams who won out the Northern Conference. And you can see the North group there wins against Moulton College, 68 to 26. And then against Bishop Burton, seven points to 70. But they lost out to Oakland's College in that stage of the competition by 17 points to 18, just the one point there. And they lost to Worcester Sixth Form College before then beating Myerscough College by 63 points to 20. But then if you look in the North Pool Division 1's results, well, they beat Brooksby Melton College 43-24, but they got their revenge on Oakland's College by 26 points to 12. And then again against Worcester Sixth Form College by 24 points to 14. So having got a couple of losses in that early league part of the competition, well, once they got through to that later stage, 
to win the Northern Conference. They were able to get those results over Oakland and Worcester that they missed earlier on. And they'll be familiar with the 3G pitch as well. They have here at Allianz Park, because they are aligned, of course, to Newcastle Falcons in the Northeast, who play a lot of their rugby on the same surface at Kingston Park. And they favor a, a fast-paced, highly skilled offloading game. Of course, the teams in the Ace League are all aligned to Premiership or Championship clubs to improve the pathway to elite rugby. And well, days like this to see who can step up on the big occasion. Tom May are absolutely crucial in the development of these players and, and how they cope under pressure. Yeah, because there's games like this that really test you, not, not only physically but mentally. How do you deal with that pressure that you mentioned? When it, when it really matters, how do you how do you transfer the stuff you work on during the week, the, the, the practices you, you you work on, the drills? How do you transfer that into a, into a final performance that ultimately ends up with your team um, winning something? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there there are some interesting things uh, doing the research ahead of this game that the coach PJ Butler of Gosforth has talked about. Last season, they were on about wanting to try and achieve 300 offloads over the course of the season. That's up to something like 60 a game. Now, most teams will, will probably get up to about 10 a game if they're having a good one. So 60 is all about their their desire to keep the ball moving and and play a very open form of, open form of rugby. So uh, should make things quite entertaining this evening. That's for sure. Yeah, and I think if you, if you you know, go out. You, you, you set to make that number of offloads. You, of course, try and train and, 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 and develop in ways that allow you to get through the tackles, avoid tackles, um, but also ride with tackles so that you can you know, develop your skill base. Um, and also, I guess, playing on a 4G pitch where the ball's not covered in mud makes it a lot easier as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, it's a, I mean, it's a great way to say, you know, we're going to go out and, and make 60 offloads a game. Um, and if we see anywhere near half of that, I would think we'll be having a good game to watch. Yeah, they're under pressure from us now as well to make sure that they get that <laughs> result. Um, so, we're, uh, well, we're building up to kick off. We're, uh, we're just a few minutes away, so do rejoin us in just a few minutes' time.
And JJ Tonks, brother of Mason Tonks as well, with that Gloucester link. The skipper is Ewan Fenley at scrum half. Josh Winfield is the 10. Welsh chap at fly half. Then the wingers, Louis Rees Zamet and Callum Barrett in the centres. Jack Reeves and Jacob Morris. And Jack Curtis is at the back. Jackson Jakes throughout the back line. And they are coached by well, John Goodridge and Wayne Thompson. They also work a little with Luke Eaves, who plays for Hartbury in the championship. We've certainly had a good look at them over the course of the season. And for Gosford Academy, well, the front row of Dunstan, Hay and Cordell. And then co-captain Joe Lashley works in the engine room alongside James Barker. Tom Marshall there at flanker is uh, also the man. Or Tom Marshall will be wearing six, but uh, more likely plying his trade at eight. Ethan Clark more likely to uh, take up duties on the blind side. Mason Luthwaite easy for you to say, is uh, the open side. Josh Dixon is scrum half, Callum Pascoe fly half, the wings, Shaw Lorimer Bell and Seamus Hutton, and the centres, Morgan Passman and Nathan Henderson, two players who incidentally uh, had a part to play last year. Nathan Henderson was on the bench, Morgan Passman started that game, and Will Roberts, speedy number 15 at the back, who is also one of those players in the Newcastle Academy, and that's what this is all about. The Hartbury College team, who are closely allied with Gloucester Rugby, of course, and the Gosford Academy, who have plenty of players in the Falcons Academy. Rowan Mullis, Birdie Stretch, Alex Hunt, Sonny Facey, Vince Everett, James Clancy, Josh Phipps and Isaac Marsh make up the Hartbury College bench. And for Gosford, Archie Barber, Lewis Spark, Ash Sinton, Grant Seward, Luke Giles, Gabe Appleby-Rutter, Lewis Williams, and Elliot Everton. Now you may notice uh, number 24 making his way on later. That in fact is going to be the shirt worn by Grant Seward this evening. So the teams are just assembling themselves in the tunnel. It won't be long before we are underway for this one. And uh, well, of course, Gloucester Rugby Tom May in terms of their premiership appearances and outings have been uh, enjoying a resurgence of form under Johan Ackerman. Yeah, they've been doing brilliantly. Where are they? Uh, second right now in the, in, the, in the table. Fantastic resurgence from Gloucester. Been under a huge amount of stress, I guess, for the past two, three seasons, but really getting their game into the top, top ranks that you would expect from someone with so much quality in their side. The teams make their way onto the field. Hartbury in the red. And Gosford Academy in the blue and yellow. Of a point made by Tom May that uh, we've got teams in black and red against blue and yellow. Of course, Saracens taking on Clermont Auvergne this weekend in the European Champions Cup. Final words to be said by Ewan Fenley in the group. Referee for this one is Harry Walbaum, assisted by Phil Bowers and Matt Sharp. It's a big stage for the officials as well, of course. Men in the middle, now Carl Dixon, ex-player turned referee, who was looking after things in the Champions Trophy final. Now it's the turn of Mr. Walbaum to look after things for the Ace League final. Can Gosworth Academy go one better than last time out? against Exeter College, or will the reappearance of Hartbury College in the final mean that, well, at times we've seen Hartbury play a very one-way traffic sort of final, so keen are they Fight to on. wrestle that trophy back to the southwest? We are underway. Callum Pascoe gets things going. And Hartbury College take the ball in, but it's actually straight in at the side. Hartbury's real first effort when it comes to the breakdown. We'll give them the chance to uh, take it down the touchline. Just 
Paul missed touch that. And a good clearance back from Hartbury. Good 55 metre kick. And already some intent to play from Gosforth. A loud blast of the referee's whistle. Penalty to Hartbury. Well, they opt for an early shot at the posts. No, it looks Literally like it's going to be an immediate decision to pile the pressure on through the set piece. They will believe in that line out, and that is a sensational kick. Build from seven or eight metres out. Blue. Yeah, certainly this opening minute, Hartbury have won that kicking battle by an absolute mile. Hartbury will want to get this right first time, but Gosforth with a really good drive back. Hartbury won't worry too much. They'll try and get it set, but Ewan Fendley will have a decision to make. He's told to use it by the referee. Now he gets it away. Winfield, big tackle in the centre on Joe Winfield. Is it going to open up for Fenley? Coming round at close quarters. Come Hartbury. Oh, but it's just been knocked forwards on the ground. Gosford need to get off the defensive line a bit quicker. Force the turnover there. Okay, stay left. Really, they look a bit sleepy. Let's have some space. Not quite sure when they came down, but certainly if they arrived today, they've had a hell of a journey prior to this game. Set. Gosforth, they decide to break open. Oh, that's worked out nicely. Asked a bit of a question from their own 22. Tried to get the ball away, but pass wasn't on. Maybe should have thought about keeping that one in. Then half breaking back, come Hartbury. Little look from JJ Tonks. Nearly managed to find his way through. Back out again from Fenley. Fenley again, back out from Winfield. Good line speed and pressure from the Gosford defence. Just around the corner push, they come. Push. around the corner from Fissenden. <laughs> loud blast from the Hold referee. It. Penalty Gosforth and for all of Hartbury's huff and puff. The closest they got to the line ended up seeing them give it up through the knock-on and then just technically a little bit inaccurate. Yeah, again, pretty disappointing from Hartbury not to keep onto that, that ball and secure it. But a fantastic break from Passman off the scrum. On the line. Just needed a bit more patience. Got so excited and nearly making the halfway line. Just tried to make an offload that clearly wasn't on. Clear shift, change of lanes. Hartbury now getting the penalty from the set piece. Clear shift. On 15. Winfield's put this one into the corner, and Hartbury will have to do it all. Can they find the momentum without making the error? Morgan Nelson, Wales under 18s. One of those players who's a year young in the side. He was on the uh, under 18s tour to South Africa. Oh, and that's a good bust around the back of the lineout. Harpery get themselves to within five metres. Winfield gives it. It's going to be the try, is it? Jack Reeves, who's got himself over. And Harpery have ended up making it look pretty easy. 
Really good late arrival. Jacob Morris getting over the try line. It's been a good start from Hartbury. Fantastic carry from the forwards to set that up. And that ball from Winfield. Fantastic, just setting it up right in front of the defender. And then Jacob Morris picking a fantastic line. Hartbury with an early lead. Just over six minutes gone and it's 7-0. Talk about consequences as a coach. Those things that result from the back of the mistakes. Really, if Morgan Passman had hold, held on to that ball near the halfway line, then perhaps that try wouldn't have come about. Holding. Thank you, Red. The referee, Gosforth, might have just taken that a little in front of the mark. Fair holding and entry. Kick into the corner from Pasco. Been uh, involved in the yeah. England training squad the last couple of weeks. On the end. 17's level. Top point scorer, over 100 points. Six called blue, the ball must go first. Nine, say ten, yeah. Forward has stopped momentarily. Stay, but you go, but you go. Dixon. Ball's available. Morgan Passman. Was the one invited onto it. Was hoping to do what Jacob Morris had done at the other end. Now it's lifted over the top, but it's well taken by Jack Curtis. Mark. He was met in no uncertain terms, but <laughs> wasn't going to miss, was he? No. Seamus Hutton. A bit better from Gosforth. Looking a bit more comfortable on the ball. And certainly now having opportunities to attack deep into that Harpery half. Two of the front rows that play their rugby at Percy Park. Now coming round on the run around is Dixon, and then straightening was Passman. Just loose though. And Fenley gets that ball away. Kick downfield. It's ended up staying in field. Will Roberts back there. He's drilled that one low. And he's just about managed to make it to touch. It was a good kick from Will Roberts. But someone needs to get that message onto Morgan Passman just to keep hold of the ball. Making some great busts, but that's no good if you just keep tossing the ball away. Vital to keep onto the ball, keep hold of the ball, sorry. He's gone quickly on this one, hoping the defence will be back on side. Oh, but the support line is brilliant, and it's Morgan Nelson still with a bit of work to do. Six metres out, pops the ball up. It's loose. Advantage offside, Rock Form. It's a penalty against Gosford, though. There was a ruck where the ball was presented back. Rock Form. Players haven't got themselves back on side. To be fair to Gosford, the ref hadn't called Rock Form, but they should have been aware enough to know that they were most likely in an offside position. Kick into the corner. Didn't end up Five rumbling minutes. it over last time. It ended up Blue being the crash ball yours. through the middle for Jacob Morris. Well, to have had two opportunities Nine. down Nine. this end of the field already so far in this half. 
Oh, we'd be pretty happy with the return. That's one thread. He wants to use it once, but now Hartbury have managed to get rid of most oh. of the Newcastle defenders and get themselves over the line for the try. Ollie Atkins, the man who touches it down. Fantastic driving ball from Hartbury and Gosforth got themselves into all sorts of trouble. Came round this near side just as the ball shifted. And they were all in the wrong positions. Just as it twists there, there's probably four Gosforth players. They're almost adding weight to that driving line out. And Hartbury, well, they're 12 0 up with this kick still to come. Fantastic. Opening 10 minutes for them. Running just ahead of a point a minute so far, Hartbury. If you can get those set piece moments right at this sort of level, that catch and drive, teams can often find it so difficult to defend. And Winfield. Lovely job. Great kick. Never deviated from his line. Fantastic strike. Just see if, as they get the shift on here, everything spins out of control for Gosford. There's too many for people out of that mall. Ends up with one bloke trying to hold up eight. It's not a fair contest, is it? <laughs> oh, this is a nice break. Nicely done from Callum Barrett. Fenley. Just about out the back from Winfield. Humphrey building up. Trying to get the break through, but Dick Vissenden will have to set up the platform more when there's a knock on and it's a turnover ball for Hartbury. Ethan Clark then thundering forward. Look for the offload. Entry. And uh, it's a penalty Entry against Hartbury. Nine, nine. He wants to make sure the mark is accurate for Josh Dixon. And Callum Pascoe going to look for that corner. Well, they have to. If they want to make 300 offloads, they can't be kicking at goal. To see near side shot of this driving line out. And as you say, so hard to stop. But some good body positions all the same from the Hartbury forwards. They'll need it here as Gothas had it. their own opportunity. It's with Dixon. Well, Dixon is waiting for it. In fact, they're looking to get a decent bit of go forward. And is Adam Hay going to be the man at the back to touch it down? I think it's between him and Clark there. Five metres out, Hartbury have managed to get a bit of a stall on it. And they fall into the deck. Ross Hay sets the ball up. They look to go into the corner. I think it's been lost forwards. Infuriating for Gosforth. Perhaps needed a couple more pick and goes at that one, Tom May. Yeah, a couple more pick and goes, but also just a bit more depth down that far touch line. If you're running with pace at good angles, if you, there's only one reason why Lethwaite felt under pressure. He was too flat. Crow. Could feel the pressure coming from that defender. If he'd given himself even just a yard more space, he probably would have been able to get that ball away. Set. Pass may have been meant for the winger as well. I'm not sure whether they wanted that man to step in and take it. A bit of a lack of communication, possibly. Oh, hey, Hartbury with the clearance. No fuss on that. Decent enough meterage from Winfield. I mentioned it earlier on. Certainly, Hartbury are win winning this on that one. kicking battle. Fenley and Winfield, both very capable. Kicking the ball from foot. Not quite sure what you kick the ball with if you're not using your foot. <laughs> Thanks for calling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'd be giving me stick when we were up there. <laughs> All right, earlier I demonstrated how to add up four and four. <laughs> <you> remember? <laughs> one all. 
four tries apiece, eight tries in total. That's the key analysis I was bringing to the party <laughs> at that stage. Gosforth with Will Roberts. Helping add his way to things is Nathan Henderson. Slightly smaller character of Callum Pascoe got himself involved, but actually the long pass looking for the support on the outside has just handed it on a plate to Hartbury. Twisting through the tackles is Joe Howard. Made another few metres. Forward colleagues happy to keep picking and going. It's what Gosforth should have done at the other end. Now they come wide again through Adkins. And are they going to find some room on the outside? Struggling to in the end. There's the ball. Fenley. Five metres out now. Oh, and the stretch right at the last minute from Joe Howard. Referee consults his assistant. What a finish that is from the second row. Australian joined this year, came over from Kuala Lumpur, and he just had to stretch an extra few inches to make sure he scored in the final. Gosforth just too tight there. And didn't really reorganise that quickly in and around the breakdown. Oh, good athleticism to get over the line. Okay. You can do that when you're six foot four, six foot five. Not a Tom May special move, that one. <laughs> five foot four, five foot five. Winfield. Not missed a moment from the tee. Six points from the boot so far. It was good awareness from Howard. Just looked up, fancied his chances. First thing you do is defend that ruck area. Get yourselves organised in and around. Make sure no one can pick and go through the middle. And Gosforth just caught napping slightly in that area and paid the price. Here's try scorer Howard again. Lost that really, please. Formed. Could have been formed. Gosford can't come straying around the fringes. Got to maintain their discipline. Kick is only just going to make it. Good kick down the end. Gosforth really have to be careful now about how they defend from these set pieces. They need to get their defence set, make big offensive tackles, try and swing the momentum of this game. Because at 21-0, with nearly 19 minutes gone, they're staring down the barrel of a big one. Ball nicely in from Nelson. Setting up with a decent bit of depth on this as it comes through from Fissenden through Winfield and then the break through the centre. Oh, it couldn't quite go to hands from Reeves. Would have been right from the top draw, that one. Fantastic break from Reeves. It's just that ability to take those opportunities. That's what the best teams do, isn't it? Seconds, just hold the weight. Might not have that many opportunities in a game. You need to take them when they're presented. And that was a clear one. Crouch! Not left too many out there so far in the opening 20 minutes of the game, Hartbury College. Balance. Never balanced. Gosforth. Get the free kick. Yeah. Josh Dixon was uh, almost running himself out of support there, but they have managed to keep it alive. Gone for the little chip through. Not sure that was uh, the option that was required. Tidied up by Reeves. <laughs> Penalty, Gosforth. Holding. Reeves not releasing that ball on the floor. Sure, Lorimer Bell just trying to uh, just in front of me. add a bit of calm. Encourage them to take their time. Perhaps a little frustrated with Dixon taking the quick taps all the time. Yeah, great turnover from Lorimer Bell. The, the chip through was certainly not the option. Red line. Should have just shifted that one or two passes further out. There's a lot more space on those width. 
Might get that husband sure in the middle. About. He was uh, one of those in the running for the England try of the month in October. Of course, every month we'll look across all the competitions that are being played and put up the try of the month Straight. options. Option. Anthony Watson was the pick. Unsurprisingly, he went for a solo effort rather than the team try that uh, Lauren Mabel was at the end of. Just too much weight. The boys are never balanced. Always up against it, you're up against it. someone like that, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, he was picking it, it's more to me. <laughs> he was the judge. He picked... Uh... I actually don't have the name Crouch. of who the try scorer was for the individual effort, but that I was... I he picked Five. himself. Yeah, no. <laughs> not not Seven, quite that bad. Six, two, three, From Carlisle, Lauren Mappel. Scotland 19's training group. Another one of those in that Newcastle Falcons Academy. But here come Hartbury with the Southwest connection. And they might have bitten a little too hard up in defence here. The options could be on for them into the corner here. They're queuing up and cutting back inside as Jacob Morris. And Morris will finish the try. And Gosforth guilty there of biting up and too hard defensively and making it pretty easy for Hartbury to find the numbers and their way to the try line. Yeah, certainly Nathan Henderson in that Gosforth outside centre position he was left all alone as Morgan Passman flew up out of the line you can't do that if you fly up out the line you have to catch someone man and ball and certainly Jacob Morris he's got the wheels to finish them off all day so something that Passman and Henderson are going to have to sort out pretty quickly it's in that under England under 18's training group Here's Jacob Morris, another one in the Gloucester Academy. Played some first 15 games now at the Gloucester Academy pre-season. And that's another solid conversion from Winfield. Not putting a foot wrong so far. Four out of four. Everyone's jamming in from that Gosford defence. Passman way out of position. Almost salvaged it, but and forwards jamming in, Passman diving in. Hartbury breaking again. Good run up to the halfway line. Tackle was in from Lorimer Bell. Nice. And then this time, rather than Hartbury not releasing, it's in fact the tackle. Tacklers no, don't run in. not don't releasing. Run in. Leave it. There you go. There you go. Referee you go. very hot on that, not. Uh, Bubbling over. Come on. Uh, it's going to be pretty no difficult release. for Gosforth to keep Eight. everything Eight. together. They'll be really frustrated about these first 25 minutes. Conceding more than a point a minute. It's always tough. And certainly they'll be very aware. It's on the cross of how yeah. under pressure they are as a side. Harpery come away again through Fissenden. Josh Dixon was told to sit down. And a big oversell from Morris. Fenley, runners at close quarters, Ollie Adkins. Happy to carry Fenley again. Now have they got a bit of room if they ship it wide? They've got numbers there. Where Fos Gosforth might be Good a little James. light. Fenley back. This is Bailey Watts. Plays his rugby at Drybrook. RFC does Watts. Good carry from him. <laughs> Penalty, Gosforth. Players Number is going eight. in to secure Number the ball three. off their feet. They've certainly got an understanding of how to secure that ball. It might have been illegal at that time, Tom May, but they, they're they aware of getting the numbers in nice and quickly to maintain that front foot ball, aren't they? Yeah, they work hard on that. But it is disappointing for them, for Hartbury being that far up the field, giving away penalties. It's just an easy way for Gosforth to get out of that final 22. He's that pressure. That's one, Blue. Gosforth. Little ball out the back. 
Pasco. Players drifting across, almost getting in each other's way there. It's easy ball Come for advantage. Hartbury to take advantage of. Just hold. Watts plays scrum half. Advantage over. Carry from try scorer Howard. And they're arriving at the right time on the shoulder here to try and keep punching into the Gosforth defensive line. A little shoot up that time from Jacob Dunstan. Now they come out deeper through Reeves. That was a good tackle from Pasco. Tackle! Fissenden again, getting involved in the good carries. He works hard. It's sort of good old-fashioned number seven. Now the ball's been knocked forwards. It's not going to come Forward. back on the uh, Gosford side, so we'll have the penalty. Well, they're getting up and making their tackles, Gosford, but none of them are very offensive. Just allowing the Hartbury players to bounce back to their feet. Much better last one. Really, from this position, really good pictures both 28 nil down. They need to be lining up these runners and literally smashing them. They need to change the momentum and quickly. Five. Six. Pick at the back from Clark. Trying to find some width on it. Got a chance to get round the outside. The ball is kept alive and back in field. And Tom Marshall, one of the co-captains, gets his hands on it. Then Lorimer Bell. Now it's with Dixon. Out again from Hay. Certainly going a little bit wider and deeper here, Gosforth, but they're not getting over the gain line and they need somebody to take that duty on. They love the offload game, which is what you can see plenty of. Have they managed to use it to find a bit of space? Cheers go up. Ball is played back in field. Red. But it's going to be a line out to Hartbury after the ball went forwards. Well, they've got the option of the scrum or the line out. They've chosen the scrum, in, in fact. But, uh, well, just at a moment where I thought they were struggling to get over the game line with that offload game, it, it proved to eventually open up a hole. But you do get a sense they just need perhaps one of the big men to set a platform. It's good third of their 300 offloads in that Crouch. series of phases but again need to stay away from those touch Five. lines work hard to stay in field set and they are getting on the front foot the likes of passman have done that successfully once or twice just need more patience with the ball heartbreak oh they've got some width here if they could choose to use it took it into contact might have been more wider Here they come through Reeves. Tackle comes in from Henderson. Fenley gets the option from Shay O'Malley, who then shovels it on Tackle! and fancies getting a bit more width on it. But O'Malley's there offering himself again. Where you going now? Ethan Clark had got through very nicely there on the counter right, but there was no one supporting him. So the solo effort went unrewarded as far as Gosforth were concerned. Back again from the Hartbury skipper, keeping things ticking over. He is in the Gloucester Academy, is Ewan Fenley. His uh, dad, Bruce, played for Gloucester as well. And the little pop-up ball for Reeves. Reeves has managed to escape the tackle. And he'll get over for the score. It's another one touched down under the posts. And it's Reeves and Morris who both scored through the centres now. Number 12, Jack Reeves. Another great score for Hartbury. Gosford can't let these two centres get into space. A huge amount of pace between them. And at the moment, it's too easy for Hartbury to get onto the front foot, which doesn't allow Gosford the time to reorganise defensively. And a great score for Reeves. And an easy, simple kick. Field just to knock it over. It's too easy to get on the front foot. Though. Too many defensive players falling off. And a simple fend. Reeves was away. Winfield scoring 10 points now. Five out of five from the conversions. Five tries for Hartbury. Still operating ahead of a point a minute. And it's, uh, well, it's a little bit desperate as far as Gosforth Academy are concerned. 
Police! Hartbury trying to create from inside their own 22. Got to be disciplined in terms of building Bang towards move. the scores. It's not going to happen from inside your own 22 all the time. Fenley, little ball back inside. Oh, that's a lovely break. Flying away is Morris. He's a real box of tricks. He's got the pace to go with the skills as well. And then gets on the run around. Just couldn't hold it. Thought it was going to be number three for Jacob Morris. But it was a scintillating break. Option blue. Amazing break. Just as you said, you can't attack your way out of the 22. Okay. That yeah. Off they went. Come called. And he's tough to stop, isn't he? Good ball as well. Five. Really difficult to make long passes on the run. Outside, you just swing and again, the just forcing things. He went back, which is good. That through was a game. try all day long if he caught that, wasn't it? Crouch. Find. Set. Hold. from Passman thought might just be good enough but the referee was closer to it and says that it is a little knock forwards it's difficult as a team and as a group of individuals when you're under pressure like this to just block out everything that's gone wrong so far but it has to be what Gosford try and do Five. Otherwise, you know, Hartley will continue to work at more than point a minute, and this could be slightly uncomfortable for the Gosforth. Fenley Kelly. going himself, Fenley scoring himself, and the Gosforth defence is looking a little optional at this stage, it has to be said. It was just too easy, wasn't it? There should be a back row here. Leave your back row with that much space. Lauren Bell just staying out on that touchline. Needs to come in and work with his back row. Push the attackers out towards that touchline. But essentially, he just left Ethan Clark with a load of work to do from the base. Fenley deciding that he's kept the tempo going enough for other people that it was about time he had to try himself. That's time, boys. Conversion attempt is the trickiest one so far, and Winfield hasn't quite managed to get that, so. Uh, the only chink in Hartbury's armour is leaving those two points out there, but Winfield has already got ten points to the boot, and Hartbury have already got six tries. This, the latest of them, scored by the skipper and scrum half, Ewan Fenley. When Clark's off the side of the scrum like that, there's no way he's going to get out to Fenley from that far. I have to work with him. Okay, back his pace, but... It's all about working together in the defensive unit. And certainly Gosforth have got some things to address in the, in the change rooms at half-time. So half-time score, well, it's been pretty one-way traffic in the Ace League final so far for 2017. It's Hartbury College at 40, Gosforth Academy nil. Can Gosforth build to a score in the second half? OK, when we come back, we'll have a look at some highlights from the first half. We'll see you in a couple of minutes.
and a lot of thought went into that. to Allianz Park for the 2017 Ace League final. And it's currently being won by, led by, I should say, jumping the gun there a little, uh, <laughs> Harpery College leading by 40 points to nil. You can perhaps understand why I made that slight mistake. Uh, but uh, we're delighted that uh, John Fletcher, who is the England under-18s coach, can join us. And he's currently talking to Bill Latham, pitch side. Thank you very much, Nick. John Fletcher, England under-18 coach. What have you made of the first half of that game? Um, yeah, the game's got away a little bit from Gosworth. They had a couple of early chances just to probably build some pressure, maybe score some points. It didn't happen for them. And then, yeah, Hartbury are a really, really good side. Um, yeah, and, and they've, they've, they played well. You know, they're, they're, they've made lots of good decisions on the ball, having made uh, many mistakes. And uh, every time they've got into the 22 of Gosworth, they've uh, punished them with tries. How do Gosforth get back into this? Uh, well, it's all down to decision making, decision making and attack, uh, when and how to pass the ball. Uh, or not, as the case may be, sometimes. Um, so probably better decisions around when, when to be passing the ball and offloading the ball, especially in the opposition's uh, 22. And then from a defensive point of view, they've probably got to... Well, yeah, they have to make better decisions of when to go for the ball at the breakdown. Uh, Hartbury, are, Hartbury are very organised around their support of the ball, uh, and I think Gossip are trying to force it a little bit. Probably need to have a little bit more patience, make better decisions of when, they, when and how they can get the ball back. And the messages to Hartbury at half-time more of the same, I guess? Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't be changing too much, to be honest. They'd probably want to score early. I'm sure that'll be their messages. Uh, they'd probably then want to get their bench on. And, yeah, I think if they score early, then, unfortunately for Gosford, it'll be uh, game over. So you in your under-18 head coach role will have a keen eye on this game, but also on the game beforehand. What did you make of that game? Uh, I thought it was an excellent game. Uh, both games are real high quality. You've got to, sometimes you've got to pinch yourself that these are under-18 players. You know, lots of 17 and 16-year-old uh, players playing. Um, I think both games are real high quality. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's of no surprise to me. There's fantastic work going on in the schools and the academies. Um, the first game was obviously closer, so it was, it was a bit more exciting from a scoreline point of view. With some really good play, um, all both games, real good attack and intent, and asking some, asking some real good questions of um, everybody's defence. Big smile on your face was perhaps some of these guys making your squads. Yeah, without any doubt, there'll be you know there'll be a number of these guys who will who will uh, feature in the future. Thanks, John. Thank you. Cheers. Really Thanks very much. That. Great to hear from John Fletcher. Uh, was commentating on uh, some of the England under 18s games in the early part of this year and he is very keen to get the message across to the players that it is about that decision making he talked about it there Tom May saying that Gosforth had missed a few early chances and and that it really is about the decision making when to pass when not to pass and and that's what the coaches have got to get into these players at this level yeah and I think the key for Gosforth there has been when not to pass you know they've tried to force the ball maybe five six times too many um, you know, and, and the ball's gone down, it's been turned over, and when you turn the ball over to the likes of um, Hartbury, you know, they're just going to run the length. Um, and, it, and it's been a difficult half, and it's how they react to that. You know, they'll learn a lot about themselves in, in a game like this, where, you know, they really they've been put to the sword early. Um, 
Or what, how, what do you do? Do you just shut up shop, roll over? Or, or what, how are you, what's your character? You learn a lot about yourself as a player. Yeah, it's important for Gosforth to come out and see what they can do. Try and score early, as John Fletcher says. And, and he's all about the players expressing themselves. Well, so far in that first half, it's been Hartbury who've been doing uh, all the expressing, scoring six tries so far. And, uh, well, the scoring was opened by Morris, who got the first try after five minutes. Finley, the man, serving it up. And then Jacob Morris, the man, to work his way through. A lot of the Hartbury scores have come from getting way over the gain line. And then that Gosforth defence, it's not exactly strong offset piece. So when it when it's on the retreat and it's trying to reorganise, really difficult. This driving line out, really solid drive from Hartbury. Gosford just lost their shape, ended up getting thrown round on the wrong side. From five metres out, there was only one outcome from there. Yeah, Oli Adkins getting his ball over the line. And then, uh, well, his second row colleague, Joe Howard, using the go-go gadget arms to make sure that he could get over for his score. Yeah, I mentioned it in commentary. Get that breakdown area sorted first. People looking all over the place. Know your roles. That's what that try was about. Oh, that was all about pace, wasn't it? Pace from Morris, but also Reeves. Kept his balance well. But they've looked sharp, those two. When John Fletcher says that there'll be people with a big future, those two definitely look like that. They will be up there. He looks like a young Anthony Allen in some ways. Yeah, there similar, is a, a similar sort of shape. Yeah, there is a touch of that. Reeves getting through after Morris had got the uh, the double score. Will we see Jacob Morris? Finding his way to a hat-trick second half. Finley helping himself to a score off the back of the scrum from his eight. And that gave us the 40 points to nil score at half-time. So the two teams make their way out onto the second half. Onto the pitch for the second half, even. Hartbury will be very happy with the position that they've got, but... Uh, well, we know that those of you who are watching on supporting Gosforth Academy will hope to see them breach the whitewash at some point. Great to have your company here on Free Sports for this 2017 Ace League final. If you missed the Champions Trophy final earlier, well, it was an absolute humdinger, and you can watch that at 6 o'clock here on Free Sports after this match. Definitely worth a watch. It was an absolute cracker. Really close game as well, so uh, it will... Uh, Certainly hold your attention if you fancy that. Over your ham, egg and chips this evening. Certainly recommend it. But it's Gosworth who have possession, and it's a little untidy. Almost getting in each other's way there, and Mason Luthwaite... It's accidental well, to his own man. The referee has decided that there was a denied defensive opportunity for Hartbury. So... Lost a base team. We'll have a chance. You just heard there. Same as how we finished that first half. Someone in that Gosforth strum, Big D now. That's exactly what they need here. They need to start this half well defensively. Don't concede. There's only one winner of this game, but they want to go out with their heads held high. Here come Hartbrick. Oh, didn't quite make it. And it was a slip down on, as Reeves came through the gap. Ball kicked into the corner. Line's yours, Blue. Tough for Gosford here, because they know what could be the case. They've gone short at the front to Atkins. Hartbury nearly getting their number four over for the second time. Close quarters stuff. Fenley will now get it away. 
to Nelson. Stopped short. Requirement here of Gosforth to defend with all their lives. They're a long way behind on the scoreboard, but they've still got to make sure they get some pride from it. But Hartbury comes straight through the middle in the end, and it is Adkins for his second try. So difficult for Gosforth in those areas. They've seen what's been done to them in the first half with the driving line out. Something slightly more intricate. Hitting the front of the line out, and then it was just big carries, wasn't it? That got them over the line. And exactly the opposite. Yeah. Start that Gosforth would have wanted. from Winfield no problem just missed one towards the end of the first half some changes already being made coming onto the field Vince Everett Is number seven, Deck Fissenden. Thank you. Referee's just uh, having his communications yeah. reset. Thanks, okay. We start from Gosforth. Well, they've managed to wrestle that straight from the restart. I didn't know, wondered if it had come off a blue hand to begin with, but the referee was there and quite happy with it. And it's in the hands of Joe Lashley. But the, the Hartbury defence is so strong, they managed to get the ball back. Up to go back to the short side. Vince Everett straight into the action, having come off the bench. Part of the Quinns Academy, part of the Academy winning side last year. Played most of the games at seven. Shrewd operator, Fenley, off to the left, then through the hands of Bailey Watts. You can see the encouragement of the forwards and backs to be Advantage, equally adept. Equally adept. But now, Morgan Passman with possession for Gosforth. Lost the advantage through looking for one of those offloads that might have been a time to hold on to it. Yeah, quite happy to look for the different spaces, Fenley. Picking the ball up from the base. Just he sat in an armchair there, really. There's loads of time to try and assess where the space is and get the ball there. But again, as soon as Gosforth get the ball in their hands, they turn it over. Fortunately for them, there's an advantage. Hold. I'm sure Laura Mabel is as wide as he can be down on this near touch line. Little first sell of the dummy. Then the juggle. Hartbury getting in there to try and defend through Tonks, but he's cleared out well. Dixon. Closer ball for Marshall, but again, it's just gone forwards. Just a bit of accuracy, isn't it, for Gosforth? Even in just the simple skills, the passing, the catching. That's what John Fletcher was talking about at half-time. Harper look, look a lot more comfortable on the ball. They've got their shapes in play. They know their, know their roles and responsibilities, and so aren't under stress from that perspective. We look at the short side momentarily. It's not on, and Tonks, right decision there to hold on to it. Morgan Nelson bursting straight through the middle of that ruck as the Gosford defence around the fringes looks a little bit short, and then it's good running from Winfield. In fact, right on the gain line was Everett. 
And Hartbury, when they get going, they are so strong and difficult to bring down as Ollie Atkins does the carrying again. Fenley then out to the left. Joe Howard stepping back. Good counter. Referee happy enough with the Gosforth counter, but as so often we've seen, they get the chance to get possession back and then they don't look, throw one of those offloads and, well, it goes to the opposition and now Joe Howard has another chance. Gosforth in a great position to win the turnover. Holding. And they get the penalty. It's a quick tap and go. Strengthening. Straightening through the middle. Nice. Lorimer Bell may have lost that. But Morgan Nelson's gone off his feet, and that's ended up being a knock-on. And uh, Gosforth will get the benefit yeah. of that run upfield okay. and position near the halfway line. Just getting a bit of a tension down in front of the posts. Two. Well, the game's all about learning, isn't it? Learning on the, on the run, okay. adapting to what sides are doing against you. In that first half, Joe Howard did one pick and go through the middle of the ruck and he scored in the corner. Well, he's done another three in that series of phases We're there. Should we get one on? Gosford need to learn, need to adapt. He's you need someone up, yeah. in behind and one person either side. And with someone like Howard, you, you need to get them there quickly. Yeah. I can hear you all. But... Okay. Phil, we got one on. This player. Come on. He's, he's on. So while the referee gets his communication sorted, we're just waiting for Gosforth Academy to make the assessment of their man at the back who is just getting some attention at the minute. see a player going off injured in any game. Okay, Blue. It's gone. It's a chance for, I think, Ash Simpson, who's onto the field. Crouch. Bye. So we can uh, see what's Set. happened here. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think it's Adam Hay, whose uh, left foot has just gone down very awkwardly, so we hope that uh, there's nothing serious there for Adam. Good Gosforth. Yeah, good hands from Lewis Williams. <laughs> Harbury come Compete. piling through, but they didn't remain on their feet. Number 12. for the academy penalty. Well. Drilled into the corner. Not given too many metres by the assistant on the far side. <laughs> At the moment, they need as many as they can get. It's been a tough afternoon for Gosforth. They need to get the line out right now. No problem for James Barker. That's a great drive as well. Oh, they've got a decent wedge flying here. And Hartbury at the minute have got no answer to it. Try and score. Yeah. Gosworth get themselves on the score sheet. Joe Lashley, the man who got the ball down. Look at those body positions. Brilliant. Everyone's legs pumping. Fully deserved that. They haven't had too many things go their way in these first 45 minutes. But they fully deserved that. That was a fantastic piece of play from Gosforth. Five points on the board. They would not have wanted to get nilled. Comebacks on. <laughs> this game of two halves. <laughs> Well, 
Well, if they can nail this conversion, then they'll be happy enough to uh, look at the scoreline as seven all for the second half. And the crowd can tell you, no problem at all. Hartbury College, <coughs> 47. Gosford Academy with their first converted try on the board. Seven. They looked pumped, didn't they, when they scored? Well, we found we found what they need to do. Get the ball up there and get it into the corner. And get that driving more going again. Callum Pascoe adding the extras. Now Gosford find they have it again. Good play from Ethan Clark. Move right. Step and then carried well. <laughs> Dixon. Got the call on his right shoulder. It wasn't the tidiest offload, but sure Lauren Mabel has it. And then it comes through Dixon again. And now they're trying to find a bit of room out on the right. It's smuggled from Marshall to Barker. And good break from Barker. Needs to find someone to set it back to. And Dixon's there. Now Lauren Mabel once more. And beginning to ask some questions of the Hartbury defence when they keep the ball in hand. The tempted little chip through has come back on the Gosforth side. Blue option. Tried to play it back into the middle of the park. Vince Everett doing enough to get a hand in there and slow them down, but Gosforth will have the scrum. Oh, it's made a big difference to them, hasn't it, already? That try from the driving line out they look more confident those offloads finally staying in the hand crouch bind set hold there you go 20 Dixon Pasco. Oh. Find a bit of room to get Henderson through, but again, the offload game is just causing Gosforth problems. Harpery do brilliantly to get it away into the corner and suggestion of a, four, of a high tackle there. The referee hasn't identified it. Knock on. Well, there might be a bit of a seatbelt tackle here. Mm. Do you know what? Oh. No, we've had this before, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're looking at me like that. <laughs> There's nothing dangerous about that in my mind. By the letter of the law, <laughs> as a penalty, but it might be an area of the law that you think at times is a little over eager. Should we leave it like that? <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> Lewis Williams is let Hold. off anyway. And... Uh, Tom May will be happy if the referee agrees with him on that score that it should have been play on regardless. Now playing under their own posts. That's oh, a good great. offload. Though. Can they find some room out to the wing here? Oh, oh, the pass was just too much. It was almost Gallic in its flair and ability to try and get out from under their posts. I mean, that is a question for Gosforth here, isn't it? They're obviously... Apparently all the players have invested in the idea that they're going for this offload game through the head coach, PJ Butler, but... Is it, is it key for them to try and enjoy playing that style of rugby or do you need to look at another style of rugby when you get to finals? Because they're obviously enjoying playing right. the offload game, but it is undoing Option. them on several occasions. Yeah, I think it's it's it's, Number color, please. it's great to show that intention Blue. to play. Blue to say, right, change. we want to get 300 offloads, but you don't want to be playing 300 one offloads change. and losing well, by 47-7 after 50 minutes of every game you play in. Yeah, Four. it's a balance you need to find. Three, four, change. And I guess the, the hardest thing is developing a skill base where you, your offloads are up there and, and, and it's not a difficult skill for you to achieve, mm. which means by playing more okay. and more rugby okay. like that, those skills develop. Whereas I would suggest it's probably harder now for them to rein that in um, at times. Crouch. And we've seen that today, you know, a real Fine. intent to offload, but really... Set. A lot of those offloads haven't been on. Yeah, it's about a bit more control. 
Now the chip goes through the middle. Oh, that's set up really nicely for Morgan Passman, but it was very difficult to take, and Jack Curtis will fancy a chance to run it back a few metres, which he does well. Pressure on Fenley. He's gone for a little basketball pass over the top, which has worked well to find his number eight in Tonks. JJ Tonks, brother of Mason Tonks, who's played a fair bit of sevens rugby for in the senior premiership sevens. Now, Hartbury have got, well, they had a four on two. Gosforth wrist defending with Pasco and Roberts coming up, and it's worked Holding. out well for them. Box there, 10. Came up on the outside to shut that down. And Gosforth have gone quickly. Oh, look out. Big hit comes in on Fancy. Grant Seward. Knock on, he's offside. And in fact, there's a knock on into offside. So once again, Hartbury can come through Fenley. Gosforth are just looking a little bit tired here defensively. Big drive and roll from Bertie Stretch. Now back in field for Bailey Watts. Watts is still being driven ever closer to the line. He stops a couple of metres short to present. Pressure coming on from Archie Barber. Gosforth have Short just release. managed to hold him up there. He's rolled and got the ball onto the line. Time off. What's the referee going to decide here? He'd already said it was held up. I've seen the ball end up on the line. Okay, as part of the initial. Try's good, boys. Time on. And he's agreeing now that the try is good and the try stands. I think he thought it was held up to begin with, but actually the player managed to rotate and get the ball down. And Hartbury College have their second try of the, se of the second half. Well, that's a good response from Hartbury. Gosforth just getting their game going. Uh, about 20. And really, just to kill that off. That's exactly what Hartbury would have needed. Those defenders from Gosforth, though, just standing by. Look at their body positions, quite high. Holly Adkins with the drive around the corner. That's the point at which the referee said it was held up. But then he manages to rotate and get the ball down. Right decision made. Adkins gets his third of the game. Not too often you watch a game where a hat-trick gets... Sorry, a hat-trick gets a second row, a second row gets a hat-trick. It's an eighth try for Hartbury. For three start dealt with well. Fenley, little show, and he got going. Tackle came in from Josh Dixon, his opposite number, very nicely. And then it's just gone over the shoulder and gone forwards from Hartbury as they were building up another head of steam. That try almost sparking them back into life. Yeah, frustrating knock on for Hartbury as we see. Nine. A few more changes. Yeah, Ethan Seville making way. And now we've got a change with the skipper leaving the field. Ewan Finley, his duty's done for now as James Clancy comes onto the field. One of the players that's really kicked on this season, James Clancy. But it's been a good display by Ewan Finley, getting himself on the score sheet as well as keeping things ticking over Set. at a pretty speedy rate. Hold. Doing an agriculture course at Hartbury is James Clancy. That just went a little bit forwards. I don't know that the referee has spotted that. Cosworth might get away with Press. one there. Away from Dixon. Pasco gone for the long crossfield kick. Oh, great Hasn't take. Worked out. It's a brilliant take by... Louis Rees-Zamet came from Wales Not this year, scores a lot of tries, hasn't 
really found a lot of space to get going because Hartbury have taken their opportunity to go straight through the centre a fair amount in this game and that's exactly what Rowan Mullis is doing there and then finds Vince Everett on his shoulder. The mobile forwards at the front of this Hartbury operation have been doing so much good work. The front five working particularly hard but as we mentioned there's been a hat-trick for Atkins. Second row, Joe Howard getting onto the scoreboard as well. Isaac Marsh. England 17s and 18s in the Gloucester Academy in his first year. The bench now keen to make their mark. Offload over the top. Really nice stuff for Clancy. And the pick and go from big Alex Hunt. Converted from the back row to the tight head. In the process of learning that trade. Another little show from Marsh. Look for the ball out to the right to try and find Callum Barrett. They're trying to put together the dream score. You could see what he was trying to do, couldn't you? But this take here, that's outstanding. Plucked very nicely. Come called. problem for we've got about 10. Rowan Mullis just back Bill. on the halfway line he's only recently onto the field he's been running well he was given a big bomb Oscar happened? Cordell Thank you. his brother Joe has played a bit of rugby at Gloucester as well he was down at the end of England under 16's level as well R rugby in the family veins okay yeah, just manage him. <laughs> Changes being made for both sides. There's a bit of a rolling replacements arrangement as well. Okay, are you happy with that gap? I'm happy, yeah. Okay. Young lads don't Crouch. roll replacements. <laughs> Five. Set. Says Tom May, who was running out at uh, the Dubai Sevens at the weekend. We did need rolling placements. <laughs> oh, just a mishandle from Passman. Forward. It would be tough to take, I think, for Gosforth to get all the way to a final and then have a performance like this in the game you so desperately want to win. I think you do have to take your hats off. Well, it's Hartbury, though, they're, they're a fantastic side and got some great players. It's gone for the second time of getting this far in the competition, but then just Crouch. being outdone. Perhaps raising questions over the strength of the Northern Five. Conference versus the Southern. Stand up. Yeah, look, Gosforth the gap's too big. Okay, winning so against Worcester Sixth Form College, Oakland's and Brooksby Mil Milton College through the month of November. Hartbury beating Exeter College, who were the finalists last Both year. Teams balance. And St Paul's Crouch. and Henley College. Five. Six. Well, talking of rolling replacements, one player that Gosforth won't want to see return is Jacob Morris, and he's just stripped off again. He's been enjoying himself in that outside centre channel, hasn't he? And uh, outside on the wing is Louis Rees Zamet. Hadn't had the opportunity to find his way to the whitewash so far in the game. They see him as a player with a great amount of potential. At that time, they went for the traditional route. Straight through the hands and to the wing. And Harpery have got themselves another. The replacements combining well there. Josh Phipps and Isaac Marsh to help get that ball out to Reese Zamet. Oh, if you can get the ball to the outside channels, Fix up that last defender with the fullback. It's always an easy run in for the wings. And a great set piece attack from Hartbury. They're playing. Here comes the hot stepper as his try scoring tune. <laughs> well, don't know how many people he had to step there. I can't remember which try it was, but someone had Peter Andre. <laughs> Would you like that one, Tom May? No. No. <laughs> Mysterious girl. <laughs> 
You won't have a word with yourself, you know what they're called. <laughs> That's the only one I know. I was just thinking, do I know any other Peter Andre songs? No, I do not. Relatively proud to say. <laughs> Conversion just goes away. simple wasn't it shift the ball to that outside channel perhaps just perhaps will roberts just had his attention turned slightly too far in field and 10 minutes remaining of the match We will be anticipating great celebrations of this one. Release eight! Back into the final. First time in two years. They missed out last year. Two knock ons, first red. The Hartbury Challenge Cup, frankly. And it looks like they're back here to eight get both 11, hands on it once James again. Please. A couple of changes coming in for Gosforth. Lewis Spark and Elliot okay, Everton coming onto the field. Lewis Williams stood alongside Everton. Changes have been made up front as well. The likes of Ash Sinton is on up there, as you can see, with Archie Barber. Crouch. Find. Set. Who's in? Pick and go from the back. Oh, that's a really lovely pass. Morgan Passman is straight through and under the posts. And where's that been from Gosford most of the afternoon? Absolutely stunning line from Morgan Passman. He's been making some big carries but perhaps just one or too many handling errors. It's when they leave it uncomplicated that Gosforth look at their most dangerous. Well, it's just a simple 8-12, isn't it? And Hartbury, you'd have to say, will be disappointed with their set-piece defence there, but you can't take away from the line from Passman. As Callum Pasco knocks over the two-pointer, 62 minutes gone, 57-14, 59-14, great line, he's a big strong lad to be fair, he's been carrying all afternoon. Yeah, plays England under 16s and 18s, it's his 12th try this season, featured in the final last year. Front. Thank you. That's you. Open up. Yeah, boys on me. Skip. On your front, man. We'll get numbers when you're in the right place. Blue numbers. Cosworth only Six one goal. score behind Hartbury in terms of the second half. It's fair to say Hartbury have been able to take their foot off the gas, of course, but uh, they've created a couple of nice opportunities second half, Gosforth. the line-out option going to be? They decide to go to the front to Marshall. Tackle blue! The referee's called a tackle. Hartbury able to get in and wrestle that one away. Vince Everett, he's looked dangerous since he's come on. Lost now, lost! Solid lump in the back row. Good dynamic back row player. They go back to the left. Rowan Mullis. Holding. Loud blast against Mullis for holding on to the ball. So Gosforth now will come forward through Pasco. Not 10. The referee says that Hartbury weren't 10. How often have we seen Gosforth go quickly on those, though, and, and then 10. force a handling over by forcing an error by an immediate pass? Missed touch. Kick downfield is not accurate. They come forward with Jacob Morris back, back onto the field. 
search of that hat trick. There is Vince Everett just running out of turf. Well, Gosforth are off. They certainly do want to play with a load of pace in their game. Gosforth still with it now down the short side. But Hartpree are running this one back. I'm trying to run it back with interest. Last line of defence is there against Morris, and then it's just been knocked into touch. touch. Yeah, interesting choice from one of the forwards. Couldn't quite work out who it was. Just dropped it onto his foot. It wasn't really a kick to anything, just turned the ball over. That's yours, Blue. Let's go, come on. So difficult to get the ball back when you turn it over. You have to respect the time you have with the ball and keep hold of it as long as you can. Marpre with it again. In through the middle. Carried by Adkins. Now off to the left. Oh, that might have yeah, been a touch high. Advantage high. Penalty only, yeah? Yeah, thanks, mate. Marpre. Just knocked it on. High. 18. Thank you. Kicked into the corner by Hartbrick. So about play out. one. In the last few minutes, towards full time, can Hartbury build to another one? Will Will Jacob Morris Nine. be uh, calling for Nine. this one? He needs to, to drop get his hands on it. Be He'll right be searching position. for that hat trick. Back ten. Molly Atkins with yeah, three. Thank you. So Jacob Morris with two as well. We'll be coming to Tom May Stay ten. for his player of the match shortly as he makes his consideration. Ball's come down. Hartbury. Give it to the forwards to begin with. It's at the back with Bertie Stretch. Bertie Stretch doesn't need to stretch. He's straight down with the score. And Hartbury crossed the 60-point mark. Another brilliant driving ball from Hartbury. Really organised in that area. OK, they had one little mark on their card when Gosforth scored at the other end but they've dominated that area as they have many areas tonight all driving in the same direction very organized and as you say no need to stretch Bertie just fall over Bertie flop <laughs> but in terms of my player of the match for today I think there's been some great performances, haven't they, by the Hartbury? 15. Both you and Fenley. As captain and nine, he's bossed the game well. Winfield's had a good game. Molly Adkins clearly with a hat trick. Been impressed with Jack Reeves as well. But my player of the match in this ace final goes to Jacob Morris. Well, the referee blows the final whistle as the final points are added. And Hartbury back into an Ace League final for 2017, back with their hands on the trophy as Oli Adkins crowd surfs over his teammates. Jacob Morris is the player of the match as given by Tom May alongside me. And certainly he was running some great lines and getting over. Scored the first try of the game. Got another one a little bit later on. One of ten tries that went over. Two scored eventually by Gosforth in that second half, but it's been a dominant display by Hartbury College, and they just have sporting acumen running through their veins down in the southwest. Hartbury College with such a proven track, re tra track record, I should say. Over 150 players have gone on from Hartbury to play through either clubs in the southwest or across representative rugby. They know their onions down there.
and uh, many congratulations to them. Wayne Thompson, John Goodrich and Luke Eaves, players who've been involved in helping coach some of the players at the top level. Development pathway that they have allows them to get into those university sides, the championship. Of course, they have Hartbury RFC that exists to allow a direct pathway into championship rugby. And I think Bill Latham is down pit side and get some reaction with our player of the match, Jacob Morris. Very much, Nick. Jacob Morris taking some stick from your teammates behind <laughs> you. Have you played a first half as good as that as a team this year? Um, in attack, I don't think we have. I think we showed great resilience in attack. Uh, defensively, I think there was obviously stuff to work on, which we were mentioned at half time. But um, I think in terms of attack, that's by far one of the best performances we've had all season. Hartbury win finals, we know that. So how much of an expectation did you guys put on yourselves as players coming into this game? Um, we didn't see it as more of an expectation, obviously, from the last year, looking back, obviously, X to one. We thought we owed, we owed it to ourselves and the college that we knew we were the best in, we were the best around, so we needed to, we just had to prove it, and uh, thankfully on the night we can. How much of an understanding do you guys have out there with each other? Oh, we spend every hour of the day with each other. It's not something that just comes and starts and ends on the training field. It is like the whole day we we'll go back to each other's rooms and we we'll spend the whole day, so it is literally more of a brothership than the friendship. And ten tries in a final, just how special feeling is that? Oh, it's unreal. Um, we, we weren't expecting that, we were expecting that, a tough a tough game and we got, we got given it, but uh, we executed when we could and uh, luckily the scoreline was in our favour tonight. Congratulations, Jacob. I'll let you go join your teammates. Right. Thank you, cheers, thanks. Bye. Cheers. Great display from that man. It's a full time score of Hartbury College 66, Gosforth, Gosforth Academy 14. Ten tries for Hartbury, as Bill says, speaking to Jacob Morris. Two from Gosforth. We'll have the presentations for you. They will be taking place very shortly. Our runners up will get up for their medals and we'll have the silverware for Hartbury College. Don't go away, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Yeah, literally. Nobody wants us around, do they? So why are we bother hanging? Was that um, last on the golf to try at the end? Was it forward? Does it really give a shit? Well, I thought about giving it, but then. Saturday, you've got a decision there, haven't you?
Certainly throwing themselves around. Very athletic players. And the presentation of the trophy is imminent. There's a few more waiting to come up and get their medals there. And Ewan Fenley will no doubt be waiting to be the man to enjoy lifting the silverware. Not the biggest travelling support that's come from uh, from the southwest. Their eighth title in nine years. Not too bad a record, is it? I'll be pretty chuffed with that. It's a pretty unique system at Hartbury. Players offered a clear pathway from the Ace League all the way up to those senior sides. Your Ace League champion, 2017, Hartbury Players! And there's the trophy in the hands of Ewan Fenley. The champions of the Ace League for 2017, Hartbury College. 10 tries in total. Morris with the brace, Atkins with three. Howard as well getting on the score sheet. Reeves as well, Fenley the skipper. And Reese Zamet and Bertie Stretch concluding affairs for that 66 points to 14 win. He'll be a happy coach. The man in charge of Harper College, Wayne Thompson, is talking to Bill Latham pitch side. Imagine you are a very happy man right now. Yeah, I am. Um, not just for the result, but I think probably a lot of pressure on that group of players having not won it last year. Um, and they built through, throughout the season, really, to get to this point. So that's more the pleasing thing for me than the actual result of the day. How clinical were your players out there at times? Um, they were. I think we tried to implement a game plan coming to this, and I think they stuck to it. To be fair to Gotham, they looked to play a lot. Um, it, sometimes it's easy to get sucked into that. Um, I think the boys were clinical. We finished off our chances, which was reflected on by the score. With, Go with you knowing that Gosforth liked to play, how important was it that you closed them down as early as you did in the game? I just think it's about, it's about keeping the ball and then playing as we did, really. Uh, working together as a defence, which we did, force the errors, and then actually just keep holding the ball, and that, that worked for us. You just had a quick word with your players in the huddle. What did you say to them? Just congratulate them, really. Again, like I said, there's a lot of pressure last year, having not won it. Um, there's some second years in there that may have gone or been the first second years or students have passed through Hartbury without having won a title. So I'm more pleased to them than anything um, after that result. Congratulations, Wayne. Yes, thank you. Well, Wayne Thompson talking about there being some pressure on Hartbury. Certainly they were looking forward to being back in the competition, Tom May, but they didn't play like a side under pressure, did they? No, and I think you heard in the interview with Jacob Morris. You know, he said that was their best attacking performance that they've had, and certainly it translated onto the scoreboard, didn't it? Weren't really threatened from a defensive point of view, but that was an outstanding performance from them as a collective unit, but also individuals putting their hands up and saying, you know, I want to be a really big part of this Hartbury College team moving forward, but also I want to further my career. 
Great to see the team looking so together. We heard Jacob Morris talking as well, of course, about how much it was a, a brotherhood or a brothership or something along those lines, I think he used. But, uh, right. yeah, do brothers. Not a mothership, no. <laughs> um, but, yeah, a, a really tight unit, clearly, and the fact that they all get on very well as friends, it makes them a real team. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the second half, well, they did come out on top. Gosforth eventually managing to get a score after Oli Atkins had gone over. That was important for Gosforth, wasn't it? really didn't want to get nilled they've been taken to the cleaners in that first 40 minutes there's only ever going to be one winner of this contest though from very early on Atkins getting over for that one where the referee uh, pulls things for a moment but then acknowledges that he had managed to wrestle over just wriggle over and get the try and Reese Zamet was on the end of this one the left winger they haven't done an awful lot in the wide channels over the course of the game, Artbury. Unfortunately for Gosford, the, the middle midfield and up front was where the holes were appearing. Yeah, Will Roberts just turned his attention too far infield. Just allowed an easy score on the edge. But that was a fantastic line, wasn't it, from Morgan Passman. He'll be guilty of making one or two handling errors throughout the game. But certainly straightened well there. Almost went in untouched. And Bertie Stretch getting over for the last score of the game. 66 points to 14. Hartbury College winning out over Gosforth Academy in this Ace League final. We witnessed a pretty good Champions Trophy final before this one as well. Two, uh, well, good quality games. Obviously, Hartbury winning that game a lot easier in the Ace League final. It was a much closer affair in the Champions Trophy final. I'm not going to reveal who won it because you might want to stay on Free Sports and watch that game back. It's uh, on after us here at 6 o'clock and, uh, well, it's definitely worth the watch. It's a really, really tight affair uh, with uh, with Dulwich College in there as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's definitely one worth taking around. Would you agree? Yeah, it would. Yeah. One or two tries. Yeah, one or two tries. Yeah. You'll enjoy that if you get your hands on it. Uh, Tom, uh, we've uh, we've witnessed some great schoolboy rugby here, plenty of stars of the future to have enjoyed seeing. Yeah, in both games, you know, certainly you mentioned the game coming up on free sports. There's some outstanding performances in that game. Um, you know, it's, it's a, you know, when you see the strength of schoolboy rugby, it's really exciting to think of, you know, these players coming through in two, three, four years' time. You know, maybe maybe leading the charge to to a World Cup that's you know further down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you you will get to see some of these guys, whether it's in the A League or in the uh, Aviva Premiership or other leagues. Besides, it's a really great opportunity to have a look at them at this stage and see them on the beginning of their journey. Thanks very much for your company. It's been great to have you with us, from Tom and myself. It's a very good evening. <laughs>